We begin tonight with multiple late breaking stories happening across the city tonight. The first a shooting on I 35 ending near the intersection of AT&T Parkway in Belgium. Authorities on scene tell us two vehicles heading south on I 35 were exchanging gunfire on the highway when the driver of one of those vehicles was hit, leading him to pull off onto AT&T Parkway. The other vehicle continuing along on I 35. The driver who was hit was taken to the hospital, but is expected to be OK. A female passenger who was with him was not injured. Another vehicle was also hit by gunfire, but no one in that vehicle was injured. We're told it's unclear right now what led up to that shooting. Meanwhile, also tonight, San Antonio police investigating bomb threats at two different Walmart locations, one off of Austin Highway, the location that you're looking at right now. That's where employees were seen recently walking back inside the store. The other location on Southeast Loop 410, which police deemed safe roughly 15 minutes ago. San Antonio Police Department says they received two phone calls to their non emergency number about the threats just before 730 this evening. The caller telling police several explosive devices were set to explode at both locations at any time. Both stores were evacuated immediately. SAPD officers and bomb sniffing dogs checked out both stores, but were told they found nothing suspicious inside. Police are still investigating at this time and will continue to bring you the latest updates as they come in. I would say if you're going to shut down a migrant facility because of these allegations, why don't we shut down all the jails? Yeah, let's shut down all the jails. There's so many allegations there for years, for decades. Immigrant advocates taking issue tonight with Governor Abbott's repeated calls to shut down the migrant shelter at the Freeman Coliseum Expo Hall. They went on a tour of that facility today, arranged by Congressman Joaquin Castro. The night team's Jesse Degollado says their biggest concerns aren't the numbers or the conditions inside, but rather how many have yet to be reunited with loved ones. The reaction similar to that of others who've gone inside the Freeman Coliseum Expo Hall. Um... It is very overwhelming. Especially so, say immigrant advocates, having been told that of the now more than 1,800 migrant youth who've been arriving daily, there are still those who've been here since the first bus loads pulled in two weeks ago. The top priority for us right now and the top concern for us is that only one child has been officially reunited. A spokesperson for U.S. Health and Human Services says finding their families takes time. Then they must be vetted to ensure their safety. As of last February, 37 days, according to the Office of Refugee Resettlement. The government says it's trying to reunify the young migrants with their families as quickly as possible, but advocates worry the longer it takes. It is going to be very difficult for them to feel a sense of normalcy, for their human dignity to be respected. Even as the numbers at the border continue to climb, advocates also say they're concerned the Expo Hall could remain a temporary shelter longer than the current 60-day contract. The staff and the different agencies running this place are prepping for a long-term facility, which is a no for us. As longtime opponents of detention centers for children and families, advocates say at least here, social workers and health professionals seem to be in charge. We know that um, the way that this facility is being handled is much different than the way some facilities have been handled. Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. And going back to Governor Abbott's allegations, the group which toured the Freeman Coliseum Expo Hall today says there are hotline numbers posted all around the facility for those being held there to report any type of abuse or mistreatment. Officials running the center told the group they take the governor's allegations very seriously and they're investigating. They add there are clinical social workers at the center who are also court mandated to report those allegations. To the latest now on a shooting we first brought you as late breaking news today at 530. San Antonio police say that victim is in critical condition tonight after being shot multiple times. Police tell us it was an argument between two men in uh, vehicles which led to the shooting in the 1000 block of Clark Street. They say the victim got out of his vehicle during that argument and that's when the suspect opened fire before fleeing the scene. The victim later taken to the hospital. There was a witness, a woman in the victim's passenger seat who was not harmed in the shooting. No arrests have been made at this point and no suspect description has been given out other than that he was driving a black sedan. Fires making up today's other top stories. One family's home destroyed, another damaged by flames overnight. This all happening in the 2800 block of Lake Arbor. 
Firefighters say when they arrived on scene, they saw flames shooting through the roof <clears throat> of a home. Again, some of those flames catching a neighbor's home on fire as well. Firefighters were eventually able to contain the fire, but the initial home that started on fire was deemed a total loss because its roof collapsed. No injuries were reported. Arson now investigating. Thousands of dollars in medical equipment went up in flames when a fire ripped through a west side office building. That building on South General McMullen used for optometry and dental offices. Firefighters tell us it was someone passing by who actually alerted them to smoke coming from the roof. The cause determined to be electrical. No one was hurt, but investigators estimate the loss to be about fifty to seventy five thousand dollars due to the equipment housed inside. And an update now on that large wildfire in Bastrop County. We first told you about on the night beat last night. The apparent cause someone cooking with fire in that area. That is according to the Bastrop County fire officials who say that fire is now 95% contained tonight. Last night we reported flames had roughly covered about 100 acres as reported by the Texas A&M Fire Serv or Forest Service. But they walked back that estimate this morning and tonight they say it's actually about 37 acres. Again, firefighters say it was a cooking fire which started all of this, but it was the weather that allowed it to spread so fast. We want citizens to be aware of the weather conditions that are occurring before they start doing anything. Um, you know, any small source of ignition, uh, you know, cooking fires, welding, uh, even chains on a trailer can cause something similar to this. And so we, we ask that, that people be more aware of what they're doing uh, before it becomes something similar. Texas A&M Forest Service says they are now working with firefighters on improving their containment lines to make sure those flames don't spread any further. So far, there have been no reports of any buildings or homes damaged. Those who were evacuated last night have all been allowed to return to their homes. The pandemic has forced all of us to make some major lifestyle changes in the past year. That includes country music legend Willie Nelson who has had to abandon living out his signature song on the road again. Our Paul Venema visited with Willie to see what life off the road has been like for the soon to be 88 year old icon. For decades, this is what a visit with Willie Nelson has been like. Enjoying a cup of coffee, listening to music, and perhaps taking a ride around his 700 acre hill country ranch near Austin. Good to see you, Paul. This Zoom chat from his home in Maui is now what our visits have become. The ranch visits and live shows are on hold due to the pandemic. Any plans at this point to get back on the road? I haven't heard anything before August, uh, and I uh, want to make sure that when I do get back out there, I'm, it's not going to be, uh, I don't want to take a chance on somebody getting sick in my audience or me getting sick. During the early stages of the pandemic, Willie was quarantined at the ranch. It could have been worse, you know. <laughs> quarantined there on the top of the hill with all my ponies, that ain't bad, you know. Uh, had a good view and nice folks around me. There, he took time to co-author this book and get his COVID shot. He also has a recording studio at the ranch where he worked on a tribute to Frank Sinatra CD. What, what's the fascination with, with Sinatra, Willie? This is your second Sinatra album. You normally sing country music. What's, what's the deal here? Frank Sinatra is my favorite singer, period. Willie said that one of his biggest regrets involves an invitation to a party he got from old Blue Eyes. I couldn't do it because I had to get on the bus and go to L.A., but uh, that's been one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't get a chance just stay there and hang out with Frank. You've got a birthday right around the corner. Uh, big plans for celebration? I'm just going to try to get there. <laughs> Hopefully I can do everything on that day as I'm doing today, <laughs> which is practically nothing. Do nothing but wait to get back on the road and back to the ranch. We'll get together down there. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. Always nice to see a conversation between Willie and Paul. Despite their belongings being taken, the softball team at Providence High School is not letting this bring their spirits down. Today, they held a plate sale to help raise money back on March 31st while out celebrating a winning game. The team's bus was broken into. Items like bags, school uniforms, laptops, and event water bottles were all taken. 
But with the money raised today, they'll be able to get some of that back. The team says they're very grateful for the community's support. Thank you to anybody who has donated because it's really been helpful and it's just really nice to get some money in to just pay for all of that that was taken and everything. It's just really nice. A thank you to all the private schools that helped because it's really like a family of private schools. So thank you for donating and trying to help us out. And the team let us know that if you'd still like to donate, you can reach out to the Providence High School front office. If you enjoy a cold beer every now and then, this week's episode of KSAT Explains is just for you. This week, the Explains team is looking into our local beer industry's past and future. Myra Arthur now with a sneak peek. Whether you prefer a Pilsner, a Porter, or a Pale Ale, it seems these days there is a brewery in San Antonio for everyone. The craft beer boom almost seemed to kind of come out of nowhere. And while you may think this local beer explosion is recent, San Antonio has a history as a brew town that dates back more than 150 years. San Antonio is definitely an anomaly um, because of the German influence. Germans are thirsty people. They like their beer. In fact, San Antonio's first brewery opened in Alamo Plaza just 19 years after that famous battle. And over the next several decades, San Antonio became the brewing capital of Texas. But at some point, the once booming industry tapped out and it's taken some time for the local beer business to build back up. It's really nice to you know, put San Antonio back on the map again. We're taking a look at San Antonio's storied beer history, the changes in Texas laws that are helping the industry thrive, and we're meeting some of the local brewers who may be behind your favorite craft beer. Looking forward to checking that out. Yeah. Live cam this evening, 78 degrees. It's been a warm day. It was nice and cool this morning, right? If you were out early, you needed long sleeves or maybe a light sweatshirt, but things quickly warmed up because we got to enjoy one more day of lower humidity today. By the time you walk out the door in the morning, you will notice uh, an increase in the mugginess out there. Check out our winds right now out of the south southeast. We saw that change in wind direction today. That's going to aid in that Gulf moisture rolling back in overnight. We've got a few clouds out there, mainly just some high clouds, but those low clouds will build in overnight as the humidity rolls back in as well. So humid by the morning. We have a low chance of some stray storms out well to the west of San Antonio. Tomorrow evening, places like Del Rio, Eagle Pass into the hill country. I'm talking to you. We'll talk about that coming up in just a few minutes this weekend. Daily rain chances, but not a washout. Your forecast coming up in just a bit. Still ahead of the night beat, President Biden appearing to make it clear he is willing to negotiate when it comes to his two trillion dollar infrastructure plan. A preview of the next steps ahead. Plus, experts are continuing to warn about a fourth wave of COVID-19 cases. Hospitals in the Midwest already filling up with patients. That story right after the break. Tonight, growing fears over a fourth coronavirus wave. In just the past two weeks, the number of confirmed cases here in the U.S. up more than 10 percent. Hospitalizations rising, too, with healthcare workers in Michigan saying COVID is spreading there like wildfire. That's even as the country hits record-setting numbers in vaccinations. ABC's Kenneth Moten now with more. It hard hit Michigan, where the positivity rate for COVID-19 is the highest it's been in nearly a year. Frontline medical staff there battling another surge, describing the virus as spreading like wildfire. This surge is bigger than it was a year ago. One ICU nurse told ABC News Monday was the worst shift of her career in 15 years. It was going room to room to room for all eight hours, and there was nothing else that I could give them, nothing else that I could do. Hospitalizations in the upper Midwest jumping nearly 30 percent over the past week. North of Detroit, a healthcare worker says patients are facing wait times of eight to 10 hours. We don't have enough, you know, people to give the care that we need to. The federal government is now sending more people to Michigan to help administer shots as new worries over vaccine distribution grows. We are not out of the tunnel yet. We've got to keep pushing ahead with vaccinations until we are fully done. The U.S. set a new single day record on Saturday. The White House says more than four and a half million shots were administered in just 24 hours. Over a third of Americans now receiving one or more doses. But hindering the fight, a sharp decline in the supply of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine expected to drop 85 percent this week. Last week, we got around 20,000 doses. Um, this week, this next week, we're only getting about 2,500 doses. 
Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Definitely a warm week out there, but once we got past Friday, really a beautiful weekend out there, Katie. Oh, it was so nice. We timed it perfectly. Only thing to complain about? The <laughs> oak. <laughs> oh my goodness. I couldn't believe it when I saw it today. Sarah Spivey sent out the push alert this morning. The highest oak reading we have had in 26 years, 40,500. That's up from closer to 20,000 where it was yesterday. Mold is low. Thanks, mold. That means we haven't had any rain around either. If we could get some rain going, we would up the mold number, but it would hopefully wash out some of this. So interesting to see where we will be tomorrow as far as the oak is concerned. Uh, we send out the pollen count via the KSAT weather app each morning, usually before about 8 a.m., uh, between about 7 and 8 a.m., just depending on when we get it in. So if you don't have that, make sure you have the KSAT weather app on your phone so that you can get that pollen count not only tomorrow, but also each day. Uh, reason that we're seeing such a high oak count this season, reason why it's been such a troublesome season, likely has something to do with the winter storm in February, but also due to the fact that we just haven't had much rain. The rain would help maybe to wash some of it out just a little bit, but that hasn't been the case. So when it was windy like it was yesterday, all of that loose pollen gets spun around and we see a count like what we had today. Latest drought monitor, updated uh, updated on Thursday uh, does show that we've got a lot of extreme drought. That's this bright red color here from uh, just west of Bear County and San Antonio. They're down through much of our southern counties all the way from the coastal bend over to Catula. So not good as far as the drought situation is concerned here in South Texas. Now over the next seven days, I do think we could see some pockets of rainfall up close to an inch, maybe even a little bit more than that, especially for areas along and north of Highway 90, but that'll be over the next seven days. So we're going to spread it out just a little bit. The reason for this uh, is because we're going to have an unsettled weather pattern as we head into the next week or so. Uh, some little upper level disturbances moving on through along with a couple of frontal boundaries. One moving in earlier on Tuesday, the second early next weekend. It looks like that one might help us out a little bit more with rain. Uh, but this first front starting to approach late tomorrow, early Tuesday could spark a couple of stray severe storms for some of our westernmost communities. So this will be starting to tap into central Texas and the hill country by late Monday afternoon early Monday evening and some isolated strong to severe storms will be possible. That's what this one means here on a one to five scale. We're at the the bottom level here, but some isolated severe storms will be possible within this green area. That's anywhere from Eagle Pass up to the Highway 90 corridor, Uvalde to Del Rio, and then up through a portion of the hill country. Any storms that can develop could produce some larger hail and also some damaging winds. So I want to walk you through future cast here. I think this paints a pretty good picture by tomorrow morning. We're overcast, humid, some patchy fog and mist will be possible. Then we get into the afternoon and we'll see some clearing, but it's by late tomorrow afternoon into the early evening hours that we could start to see some thunderstorm development way off to the west. Also in a northern portion of the hill country. If these storms can get going west of the border again, large hail will be possible. Also some damaging winds now. Am I is this saying that this is going to go right for Del Rio? No, thunderstorms like this will be possible anywhere from northern Valverde County all the way down through Maverick County. So it's not necessarily going to be just Del Rio, but essentially in this vicinity is where we could see some severe storms develop late Monday afternoon into the early evening hours. Also, again, northern tier of the hill country. Uh, it looks like what's going to happen here this happens fairly often is that these storms get going off west, but they don't have enough juice to make it to I-35 in San Antonio. That is what we anticipate from Monday night into early Tuesday morning. Sarah Spivey will be here tomorrow evening to keep you updated on that, but just keep it in the back of your mind if you're in some of our westernmost communities. So 78 now, 85 in Del Rio. It is humid. These dew point numbers are rapidly climbing, and you're going to notice the humidity first thing tomorrow morning 65 your morning low up to eight, up to 88 in the <clears throat> afternoon looking at the week ahead not quite as hot as last week uh, thanks to the cloud cover and added humidity Tim that added humidity will make those uh, webworm webs even more sticky I yeah guess, huh? yeah <laughs> all right Larry will be along with a preview of instant replay right after this Tonight, all of Japan is smiling because one of their own won his first green jacket. Plus, the Spurs were looking to snap a five-game losing streak, 
But standing in the way, the Dallas Mavericks. With more of what's on tonight's instant replay, let's check in with our Larry Ramirez. You know, it's certainly been an April to forget for the Spurs. Yes, that is. is until tonight when they actually played some pretty good ball. The Spurs-Mavs rivalry has cooled off in recent years, but it's always an important game for both clubs. Highlights and more tonight on instant replay. It's okay. <laughs> right, that's the why. Who predicted that by one? Matsuyama is Japan's first Masters champion. Hideki Matsuyama was all smiles today after making history. He's the first male golfer from Japan to win a major championship. Now, he wobbled a little bit at the end, but held strong to win his first green jacket. We've got the final round coming up. Well, I, I really like it here. It's a tough decision to uh, decide to leave. And uh, when I go over there, I'll learn the culture from my cousins and all of that. Samuel Moore plays soccer for Johnson High School and is getting ready to take his football skills to England. Young man has a great background and a very cool story. Plus. I just talked to my dad and my brother, um, and we thought it was the best time. Um, I went to Stanford with, with two main goals. That was to get a top-notch education from a prestigious institution and to win a national championship. And having done both, um, I just thought it was time to, to enter my name into the draft. Kiana Williams is ready to hear her name called Thursday night during the WNBA draft. She won a national championship here in town, and now she's ready to go pro. And what do you think is keeping the Spurs from winning right now? That's our instant replay poll question, and it has people talking. And we're going to be talking later. Yeah, you're going to be here for Simmons tonight. Yeah, you're going deep into the bullpen tonight. <laughs> but you know you're always an ace, bro. Well, thank you so much, Larry. We'll see you again in just a little bit, and we'll see you on the other side of this break. Then I be President Biden giving his $2 trillion infrastructure package the full court press today, making it clear he is willing to negotiate. The president is expected to meet with a bipartisan group of lawmakers on his proposal tomorrow. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has more. President Biden sending several messages today that he's ready and willing to negotiate over his ambitious $2.3 trillion plan to overhaul America's infrastructure and that the scope of the package is good policy. He knows that, it, that his current plan is going to be changed. That's the nature of compromise. Republicans and some Democrats say Biden's package is too broad, pushing back on some parts of the plan, arguing they don't qualify as infrastructure. If they're interested in roads and bridges and highways and uh, perhaps broadband, um, there, is a, there is a deal to be had there. Democrats counter, saying infrastructure evolves to meet the American people's needs. In 1990, we wouldn't have thought that broadband was infrastructure because it wasn't on the scene yet. The president's bill calls for $100 billion to expand broadband internet to 100% of the country, $45 billion to replace every lead pipe. There's also $115 billion to fix 20,000 miles of roads and more than 10,000 bridges. Plus money for seniors, promoting green energy like wind turbines and charging stations, fighting climate change, and training millions of workers. Democrats planning to pay for the plan in part by increasing the corporate tax rate from 21% to 28%, which would still be lower than under the Obama and Bush administrations. This is a massive social welfare spending program combined with a massive tax increase. Biden is scheduled to meet with a bipartisan group of lawmakers tomorrow. We're willing to negotiate a, a much smaller package. Democrats say the president would like to see progress by Memorial Day and passage this summer. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. In Oklahoma, a van called Medicine Runner is bringing the COVID-19 vaccine to remote Native Americans at high risk. It is one of two mobile units the Muscogee Creek Nation is using to provide the vaccine to natives in and non-natives. The tribe is partnering with churches to bring the vaccine to where the people already are. We're trying to make it easy, you know, where they're not having to drive to Tulsa or Muscogee or a metro area to access the vaccine. The mobile clinic has reportedly been so successful, some tribe members have traveled in from out of state to get their vaccines from it. The Muscogee Creek Nation Health Department is now discussing how it could also be used in the future for things like sports physicals, vaccination clinics, and other health services. Checking headlines around the world tonight, St. Vincent and the Grenadines awoke to an eerie landscape this morning covered entirely with volcanic ash. Take a look. After back-to-back -back eruptions, a volcano in St. Vincent rocketed ash plumes nearly 10 miles into the atmosphere. 
With more than 16,000 people under evacuation orders, the island nation faces a new challenge as overnight ash showers have hardened, leaving many homes without water and electricity. The prime minister estimates it may take up to four months for life to return to normal. Charles, Prince of Wales, paid tribute to his late father, Prince Philip, yesterday. Speaking in a pre-recorded statement from Highgrove House, Charles says his father was a very special person that will be missed enormously. He emphasized that for the last 70 years, his father had given the most remarkable, devoted service to the Queen, to his family and the country, but also to the whole of the Commonwealth. A ceremonial royal funeral will be held for the late Prince next Saturday, April 17th. He was 99 years old. Another check outside with live cam. This time a beautiful view of uh, downtown San Antonio. We had some high thin clouds in the sky today. Did you notice them? They still let plenty of sunshine through and that helps to warm us up again this afternoon. A high temperature of 89 at the airport, but with the low humidity really didn't feel that bad. And it was that slightly drier air that allowed us to start off at 52 this morning. So a big swing uh, in our temperatures today. We're not going to see such drastic swings from morning to afternoon as we head into the week due mostly to the increase in humidity that you will notice first thing tomorrow morning. We'll take another look at your work and school week forecast coming up in just a bit. Tim. Thank you, Katie. We'll look forward to it. She started the only Conjunto school music program in all of San Antonio, and she steals the spotlight in this week's What's Up South Texas. Her story next. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Learn your passion and stick with it. That is the message of one Southside ISD music director who was inspired by that same message watching her father play conjunto music growing up. She's next on What's Up South Texas and shares why she wants her students to have that same encouragement. Test one, two. This is the music people like to hear and dance to. I'm very familiar with the arrangements. I know exactly how they're supposed to sound. This is 63-year-old Ana Bustamante, and this is her Conjunto music program. She started at Southside ISD in 2015, the only Conjunto school music program in all of San Antonio. I enjoy being able to provide this opportunity for them and to make them understand. It's unique, it's special. One of the things that makes this type of music unique features an accordion, something Anna grew up around. My, my dad played the button accordion, my mom played the piano accordion. My mother grew up in a family of musicians, but my dad came in and uh, he formed a conjunto with my mom's three brothers. Conjunto music filled her home throughout her entire childhood. The Gallardos, Juan, Jose, and Alfredo, they stayed together like 40 years, playing at weddings and, and quinceaneras and just all kinds of events, and there we were. That was, they would practice in our house. Eventually, that beautiful music sent Anna and her other siblings on a musical path themselves. She was heavily involved in mariachi and even started her own music ministry before ultimately teaching mariachi for Southside High School. But it was her students' interest in the accordion that revived her conjunto memories of her father, Ambrosio Uriegas. Oh, my dad used to play that song. And these young people are still playing the songs of so many years ago. Anna says starting this program was in honor of her dad, and it has paid off. It was his passion. Man, he would be like thrilled. He probably wouldn't play with them <laughs> if he was still alive. She hopes the musical discipline her father taught her will inspire her students in the future. In order to learn your skill, it's not going to happen overnight. And you need to be passionate about it. Well, what's up, South Texas? I'm Japhany Gray. Still ahead on the night beat, pets can be great companions, whether you live alone or with family, but can they make you sick? Some tips on staying safe at home next. In case you missed all the social media posts, today is National Pet Day. And while it's an occasion to celebrate your uh, furry friends, it's also important to know whether your pets can make you sick. 
you know, they can do a body good, helping ease loneliness and even reduce blood pressure. But along with those benefits, pets can sometimes carry harmful germs. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz on how to keep the whole family healthy. Backyard chickens. 2020 made them an urban and suburban trend. These three I got two years ago, and then the rest of them were all uh, pandemic. Cooped up people started backyard flocks, but according to the CDC, that came with an explosion of salmonella outbreaks, not from eating, but from handling. Bacteria can spread from live poultry via their feces. They walk in it, peck in it, and roll around in dirt, and it can get on their feathers and beaks. That's why the CDC advises against cuddling or kissing your pet poultry. But it's not just feathered pets that can make us sick. Healthy animals that are well taken care of can carry germs like E. coli or salmonella. Keeping your animals' outdoor areas tidy can help reduce the feces they track around and remove your outdoor shoes before coming inside. It's also important to keep your pets, especially cats that go in and out of a litter box, off your counters and tables. If that's not possible, at least clean those spaces before you prepare any food. Your pet's food may also be risky, especially raw pet food, which can carry potentially harmful bacteria like listeria that can lead to vomiting and diarrhea. The best thing you can do to keep you and your pets healthy, something you've heard a lot of, wash your hands anytime you touch the animal food or their bowls. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I love all of my pets, but they are disgusting at times <laughs> and there are things I don't want to have to deal with. Mm -hmm. So yep. here you go, wife. <laughs> oh, okay. I, <laughs> you when it comes to the cats, she takes care of the cats. I okay. take care of the dog. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm taking care of the cat too. That made me think about the, the litter box. Near yeah, they hate the litter box. It's like they go in there and they do sprinkles and it goes everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> so no, no one's come up with a good litter box solution yet. Um, time lapse from today. It was a really beautiful day. I hope you're able to get out and enjoy maybe with your furry friends. We started off with some high thin clouds, broke through to blue sky, and then some of those high thin cirrus clouds did come rolling back in late this afternoon and this evening. Always makes for a beautiful view out there. Our sensor at the airport is picking up on some of those mid and high level clouds. 78 degrees dew point in the mid 50s. And it's a little breezy. Winds have picked up since sunset, uh, sustained at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. But we do have some gusts closer to 20, 25. So uh, that breeze would help you out if you're out late on this Sunday night. 16 miles per hour in New Braunfels. But west of 35, winds aren't quite so breezy. Calm winds in Kerrville at this hour. Overnight winds will be just about 5 to 10 miles per hour. So breezy for a couple more hours. And then light winds heading into early Monday morning. Six, 76 in Hondo, excuse me, 81 in Carrizo Springs. 82 in Catula. These are the important numbers tonight. Our dew points measure of moisture in the air. The higher these numbers are, the more humid or muggy it feels. And we do have some dew points in the 60s. As you get closer to the Gulf of Mexico, a very humid air mass is going to build back in overnight through early tomorrow morning. And you will notice it when you walk out the door. Look, just compared to this time last night, our dew point here in San Antonio is 23 degrees higher. It's 26 degrees higher in Pleasanton, 15 degrees higher in Del Rio. So those winds becoming southeasterly today, really starting to bring the moisture back in as we speak. So just some high thin clouds out there right now. But as we head into the overnight hours, as that moisture continues to fill in, that will aid in low clouds filling in across the area through early Monday morning. So tomorrow it'll start off muggy gray with a little bit of patchy fog and mist possible. I don't expect any fog to be too widespread, but we certainly could have some pockets of fog out there early Monday morning, staying pretty gray through midday and then into the afternoon. We should be able to break through and see some sunshine. Now for most of us tomorrow looks to be a rain free day, but if you're well west of 35 places like Eagle Pass up to Del Rio up in the hill country, you do carry a chance of some isolated storms tomorrow. So look what happens by 7 p.m. We have thunderstorm development west of the border. These storms as they develop are expected to move off to the east. We could also have some isolated storms in the far northern tier of the hill country. 
But what I'm kind of most concerned about heading into late tomorrow evening for our friends off to the west are any supercell thunderstorms that could develop anywhere along the border in Valverde County down through Del Rio, also down as far south as Maverick County and Eagle Pass. So this is something we're going to keep a really close eye on late tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening, because if any storms can develop, they could carry a threat of some large hail and also some damaging winds. So we have that concern there for our border counties, but also again, northern tier of the hill country with the frontal boundary dropping down. We could have some isolated severe storms up Gillespie County, Fredericksburg off closer to Junction and then northern Edwards County as well. As we head into the overnight hours tomorrow night, any storms that develop in the evening are expected to weekend, not expected to get to San Antonio and I-35 um, as we head into the pre-dawn hours of Tuesday morning. So concerns for any storms tomorrow will be west of San Antonio and 35 anywhere in this green area here again, large hail damaging winds not out of the question if storms can develop Monday evening. So something to keep in mind for our westernmost communities. 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, just shy of 70 in Del Rio, mid 60s here in San Antonio. Cloudy skies, light south southeasterly winds as we head into the afternoon again, a little bit of clearing that'll help to warm us up nicely. 88 here in San Antonio, some low to mid 90s off to the south and to the west. Keep in mind places like Eagle Pass, Del Rio, Hill Country, straight storm not out of the question later in the day on Monday for the rest of us better chances of some low end showers and storms will kick in as we get into Tuesday with the arrival of a frontal boundary and really just a messy weather pattern this week will keep low end chances of rain in the forecast all the way through the start of next weekend. Could do without the severe weather, but we'll certainly take the raindrops. Definitely. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. Without much new to offer, the long awaited showdown between Godzilla and King Kong keeps its crown this weekend at the box office. We'll tell you how the rest of the competition fared next. Sci-fi thriller Voyagers debuted in fifth place with $1.3 million. Raya and the Last Dragon held strong in fourth place, bringing in an additional $2.1 million and pushing its domestic total over the $35 million mark. I have read several libraries worth on the supernatural. Horror flick The Unholy fell one spot to third place with $2.4 million. For 12 years, I worked for some very dangerous people. The Bob Odenkirk-led Nobody rose back up to second place, taking in $2.6 million. She had nowhere to go, so I made a promise to protect her. Godzilla vs. Kong remained the weekend's top draw, raking in $13.4 million from Friday through Sunday. At $69 million total since its release, the actioner has now become the top grossing film since the pandemic began. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Incarnate Word football came up on the wrong end of a high scoring game against Northwestern State and a former Steven standout led the Demons comeback. Plus, the Spurs faced Luca and the Mavericks tonight for the final time this regular season. Larry has that and a lot more on instant replay tonight. And you know what? The Spurs did a great job they keeping did. Luca in check. Part of the reason why they won. Greg is off and probably sipping <laughs> drinks with those little umbrellas in him. Hopefully <laughs> he saw the Spurs first win of the month of April coming up tonight on instant replay. Ground ball to shortstop. Kim will go to first. The San Diego Padres get their first no-hitter in the history of the franchise. San Diego pitcher Joe Musgrove tossed the first no-no in franchise history, and he did it while really, really needing a bathroom break. But baseball players are superstitious, so he held it. Plus, Eddie Godina right down the middle. And Northwestern State walks out of here with a victory in San Antonio. That field goal helped Northwestern State upset in Carnot Word last night. Both quarterbacks had great games, while former Stevens QB Bryce Rivers set a school record for the Demons. Plus, Sadecki makes history, and this is a big week for star guard Keanu Williams and her family. That and much, much more tonight on Incident Replay. You know, when they were talking about spring football earlier last year, yeah. or what, that that was going to happen, you would think, eh, it's not going to be exciting. There's been a really fun time to watch. UIW has a great offense. They know how to put yeah. up some points. All right, Larry, we'll see you again in just a little bit. Would the promise of a party be enough to convince you to get the vaccine? That's what volunteers in one Pennsylvania neighborhood were hoping for. We'll tell you what happened in Something Good next. Even when they leave me alone for a whole hour, we still find a way to end the show with something good. 
Want to get more people vaccinated and motivated to be vaccinated? Throw a party. Volunteers in Philadelphia's Germantown neighborhood have been making a vaccination celebration from a social distance, of course. Organizers say it took more than a month to put the event together, but they eventually got enough balloons, bells and goodie bags to entertain those who came out to get their vaccine this weekend. And the whole thing runs solely on the spirit of volunteers. That's all of our time for all of us here at KSAT 12. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to tune into Good Morning San Antonio for all your latest overnight news. And all new instant replay starts right now. And good evening, everybody, and welcome live to Instant Replay. Greg is off tonight. The San Antonio Spurs have been off lately, not playing well at all. Entering their game this evening, they were 2-8 and eight in the last 10 games with five straight losses. Did they end that streak tonight? Let's find out on Spurs Game Day. The Spurs played at the Mavericks tonight, and Dallas is going for the three-game regular season sweep. First quarter, Spurs are on the break. DeMar DeRozan scores. That bucket pushes him past Celtics great Kevin McHale on the all-time scoring list. Moments later, DeJounte Murray knocks down the tray. He had nine points in the first. End of the first, now Drew Eubanks with the putback as the buzzer sounds. That was the Spurs' only bucket in the last four minutes, and we are tied at 26 after one. Second quarter, Spurs take back the lead. Murray. With the pass to wide open, Jakob Pertl for the Jakob dunk. Then Dallas gets to work. Kristaps Porzingis moving in for the slam dunk. And then a little bit later, how about Luka Doncic adding back-to-back -back buckets. Those two combined for 33 points at halftime. And Dallas leads by 5, 56-51. Murray led the Spurs with 13 at the break. Third quarter now, Spurs on a 9-0 run. DeJounte Murray with the basket and foul. Three-point play, Spurs up 60-58. And check out this layup under the basket by Keldon Johnson from DeMar. Nice move. Midway through the quarter, Derek White nails a three. This is a close game late in the third. In comes Lonnie Walker, the fourth, and he makes this triple. Then watch out for the slam dunk on the break. Three on two, and Walker with the one-handed slam and the foul. That deserves a second look. Spurs are down 89-88 after three. Wow, my goodness. After several Walker and Murray baskets, Patty Mills with a tray, Spurs up 99-91. Under six to go, Perto with the bucket and the foul, another three-point play. Spurs up by four moments later, DeMar gets fouled while he makes this basket, another three-point play. Spurs lead by nine, but that gets cut to one with under two to go. DeRozan drives, gets hit, bucket and foul again. Spurs led 117-113. 20 seconds to go, Doncic makes a floating jump shot, and he ties the game at 117. So who are you going to give the ball to in this situation? DeRozan. He was hot late, and he makes his long J with .5 left on the clock. Mavs final shot, Luka Doncic with the three from almost half court, doesn't even reach the bucket. DeRozan had 33, Murray with 25, and here is your final. The Spurs win 119 to 117 to snap their five game skid. Now, after the game, DeRozan talked about getting into the zone, especially late in the fourth. Um, it was a combination of a little bit of everything, teammates um, getting into the zone. Um, Picking and choosing, choosing my spots. I want to be aggressive. Third quarter, I just try to come out, be, be a lot more aggressive. Kind of try to set the tone for us and, you know, um, let it carry over from there. And, you know, I came down late in the game and, you know, I just kept a, a tech mentality and took what they gave me. He set the tone. All right, let's check out the final stats tonight. Spurs won the battle of field goal percentage. Mavs hit a couple more three-pointers, actually a few more than that. Free throws made, went to the Spurs and rebounds. The Spurs won that one 41-37. As for a few other stats, look at the assist that goes to the Mavs. The Steels won the uh, the Spurs won the, st the steal battle 10 to 5. Turnovers, Spurs had a couple three more. Fast break, that's pretty impressive. Spurs 15 to 5 outscoring the Mavs and the bench. Did a little better for San Antonio than for the Mavs. Looking at the Western Conference standings now, you have Utah leading the way at number one, followed by Phoenix, the Los Angeles Clippers, and the red hot Denver Nuggets. Looking at the rest of the Western Conference, as far as the leaders are concerned, you have the Lakers at five, Portland at six, Dallas seven, Memphis at eight, and San Antonio is right there at number nine, 25 and 26, just one game back. 
The second worst team in the East will be hosting the Spurs tomorrow night, but tonight the Magic hosts the third best team in the East, the Bucks. And the Bucks wasted no time taking control without reigning MVP Giannis Adenokounmpo. In the lineup, former Spur Brent Forbes gets in on a first quarter barrage with his three pointers. He had 13 points, and Milwaukee left 57 38 at halftime. And it only gets worse from there. Chris Middleton to Brooke Lopez with the alley oop slam. Bucks cruise to a win, 124 87. So here's the Spurs upcoming schedule. They will play at Orlando tomorrow, so they're flying there right now. Then at Toronto Wednesday night to end the five game road trip. Then they come home and they will host the Portland Trailblazers Friday night at 730. And then they go to play the Phoenix Suns at Phoenix Saturday night at nine. The UIW Cardinals football team won their first three games this season and suffered their first loss on March 27th against Nichols. Last night, they faced the 0-5 Northwestern State Demons. Stephen High School graduate Bryce Rivers threw for a school record 477 yards, that including three touchdowns for NSU. He also rushed for 30 yards. The Demons outscored the Cardinals 23-17 in the fourth quarter, including the game-winning 32 yards. Run your own race. That's what I've been telling a lot of kids. People have been asking me for advice. Run your own race. Um, don't compare your, your journey to others, uh, whether it's basketball related, sports related, or just uh, life in general. Run your own race and, and stay on your own path. Wise words from the national champ. Wagner alum Kiana Williams shared her thoughts on winning the women's final for last Sunday night. She remains humble, but what you may not have noticed after the Stanford missed that game winning shot was Kiana didn't rush to join her team right away to celebrate. Instead, she took time to say a few words to Erin McDonald after she missed the basket. Classy move by Kiana to her opponent. So what did she tell her? Just, it hadn't hit me yet, I guess, and um, we just have great respect for one another. We've been competing against each other for the last two years, um, and I, I knew how heartbroken she felt because I've, I've missed game-winning shots, but obviously that was at a bigger, ma bigger magnitude uh, winning, for winning it all. So I just wanted to embrace her and, and congratulate her on, on leading her team. Uh, I told her she was an inspiration to me. Uh, she motivated me. Uh, she's a great competitor, and I told her she has big things coming in the league. Uh, so I just wanted to share that moment with her for sure before I went to go celebrate with my team. Just two days after winning the national championship, Williams announced she will be going pro. The WNBA draft is this Thursday at 6 p.m. She is projected to be picked in the top 10. We'll be watching to see where she'll play her rookie season. Time now for tonight's instant replay poll question. What do you think is keeping the Spurs from winning right now? A, missing LaMarcus. B, tough schedule fatigue. C, injuries. Or D, coaching. Vote now and uh, tweet us your own reasons. We'll have the results at the end of the show tonight. One segment down, three to go. Up next, one local soccer player is heading across the pond to fulfill a dream. How's that been for you to, to go over there? Well, it's kind of a, it's kind of already giving me like a heads up of like the style of play over there. It's like more aggressive, more intense, the team to play against and more physical. One Johnson High School senior soccer player is about to get a big upgrade in competition when he goes to play football in England while attending college. We got the feature on Samuel Moore coming up. Who wins the final round of the Masters? We got the highlights. The Astros had the day off after a successful start to the season. How would the Rangers do in their series finale against the Padres? And baseball is returning to the Wolf this month, but it's not going to be the missions until May. Find out where you can catch some live baseball with some notable stars headed to San Antonio. And Tim Gerber joins us for the Sports Guys. But before we hit the break, congratulations to UTSA Cheer. They won nationals for small co-ed Division 1A at NCAA this weekend. Congrats to head coach Gabe Ortiz, his assistants, Ashley Johnson and Carla Perez, and Travis Owens, and the entire squad. Instant Replay, we'll be right back.